Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources we used for our American Revolution unit study. Now this was a shorter unit study than what we typically do. It only lasted about one to two weeks and usually our unit studies will last a minimum of three to six weeks and often lasting even a couple of months. So I've got more books and resources here than what we actually used for our unit study. So I want to walk you through what we use, what we didn't use and how we use them. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is the Professor Noggin's American Revolution card game. And we love these card games. They're especially useful for our opening activities. And by mistake, we had a couple of cards in here from uh, the Civil War uh, Professor Noggin's game. So that was a little bit confusing for us as we went through them. Anyway, you have some really beautiful illustrations on the front cover. And then on the back, you have a set of easy questions and a set of hard questions. And because they're trivia based, if you don't know anything about the subject area that you're going to be studying, it can be a little bit more challenging to do this. Now, what we like to do is start off with our easy questions. And then as the unit progresses and as we play the game and get through the easy questions, we like to challenge ourselves with the harder questions. It also comes with a dice and you can just roll it and figure out what question you're going to do but a lot of times we'll just we'll play the game where we'll just start with question number one and then the next round we'll do question number two and so on so we really really enjoy these card games they come with so many different topic areas and i highly recommend them they're really great for uh, your opening activities it's just kind of a great way to get the students into the learning for the day and it's a great transition activity I want to show you uh, a couple of books that were my son's assigned read-alouds. Now, when we're doing a history unit, I especially like to do a historical fiction or a biography. I think it's a great addition for a unit. Now, he's previously read My Brother Sam is Dead, and because he had so much other reading, he ended up foregoing reading this one, and he did some other reading, which I'm going to show you a little bit later, but I think this would make a great... Uh, read aloud or a great assigned reading material for this unit. As we got through our unit and we were reading about you know, uh, the Revolutionary War and just the events leading up to that, uh, a lot of references were made to Thomas Paine's Common Sense. And since we had this in our homeschool library, I pulled it out for my son to read. And it was a really big challenge to read. Even me reading it aloud was really challenging. We had to pause after every sentence or every paragraph and really dissect it and really try to make sense of what it was actually saying. And this was, um, this was a little startling for me because my son is an avid reader. And in our homeschool, we also read aloud a lot. And so to have such trouble reading a book that was so widely read at the time, I, I feel like there's something lacking in our ability to understand uh, texts from the past. Now, either our, our language has changed so much that it makes it more difficult for us or just the, the style of writing or whatever it is. I just found that we needed to spend a little bit more time and I would like to in the future spend more time going through these texts that I think are more grade level because I think a lot of our materials have gotten watered down quite a bit. And so while he reads so many things and we as a family read so many things, sometimes we struggle through some of the things that we think, oh, that's, that's not going to be so hard. And then you read through and you're like, oh, actually that's a little bit more challenging so he actually didn't finish this book i really want him to finish this book but what i found was that the he could read through it no problem but he had trouble really explaining it and and sharing what the book was about he's 13 years old and so while i think this is probably more suitable for high school he's in eighth grade and i felt like it would be a good match for this unit but that's how you know we we work through it Okay, I want to share with you the American Story series because this series of books is one that I really, really like and we have used it in our history units and whenever I can find one that complements a history unit for American history, we go ahead and grab it and we read it. This one's called Liberty or Death and I want to just say that we didn't actually make it through. I think we only have like maybe 10 pages left and for some reason we just got distracted while reading this and went on to another book and I want to explain what happened and why we did that. But these books are are really fantastic and I think that if you weren't going to use textbooks for your unit studies this would make a superb uh, replacement because you're going to get all of the stuff that you would normally get in a textbook but you're getting it written in a way that's really 
captivating compared to a textbook. It is still quite lengthy and information heavy. So you, you probably want to go a little bit slower through a book like this. And the illustrations are fabulous. So I really, really like these books and we definitely use them with our history units. But the way that we use them this unit was to just read as much as we could before we felt really saturated with information. Then we put it aside and we kind of broke it up with a, a picture book or another activity so that we didn't read this cover to cover in one sitting because that would be too much. Also, as we read through these books, there are a few that I have here to show you. We would we would add other books into the mix. So if we got to a section on George Washington, for instance, we would pause and read the picture book of George Washington. And that was a nice background information. And it kind of broke up the lengthiness of this book. These books are by David Adler. And I have the one for George Washington. I have Paul Revere. We also have Benjamin Franklin. And I really love these biographies. They work really well with our history units and other units as well. The illustrations now are a little bit dated, but other than that, I think that they're fabulous additions to our units. Now, as we were reading this book, we got to the section on Valley Forge. And so we paused and then we read this book on Valley Forge. And that's because I found that as we were going through all of these battles, we it, it started to get a little bit hard to keep everything tr in track and or in in our minds and and make sense of it and and keep the chronology correct so I decided to dive a little deeper into the year that the men were at Val or the, the winter more specifically that they were at Valley Forge and I really really loved this book I was surprised because I thought maybe it would be a little bit lengthy and boring and a little bit wordy but it turned out to be an awesome addition to this unit and I actually was prepared to forego this book in uh, so that we could do other books, but I'm really glad that we didn't. Now, it, it definitely went into detail, but I think I would have liked even a little bit more. And the reason for that is that we're doing, we're covering a, a big time period. And I feel like once we're done with a unit like this, it's really easy to forget where everything was. And so if we can anchor the unit with one situation that we understand really deeply, like Valley Forge or the Boston Tea Party, then we can, we can add things before or after, but we have an anchor for the unit. So I was hoping this book would would help us do that for the Revolutionary War and it did to an extent but I would have preferred more and the illustrations are really beautiful and the the writing was super easy to get through so in the sense that it was really well laid out so each section coordinates with the illustration and you could read it through from cover to cover but you can also just read one section at a time and that would be sufficient as well all right so let me move on to some of the other resources that we have and the next book I want to show you a couple of the books uh, that I want to show you actually are part of that American story series so we have a more perfect union the story of our Constitution and unfortunately we actually didn't get to this book even though it probably wouldn't have taken us too long to read but because of all the other resources that we had we we skipped this one but I would love to just still add this into our opening activities even now that we've progressed out of these units into other units I think that it would be a good idea to have some of these picture books that we didn't get through added to our opening activities moving forward it keeps the information alive and it allows us to review material that we weren't able to get through and also because it stands alone by itself I think sometimes you will remember it more clearly because it's part of another unit that has nothing to do with history like we're already into our geometry unit for instance so when we're doing something that's just packed and we're so intensely involved in a particular unit like this one the history unit Sometimes the information just starts to just get muddled together. And so having a standalone uh, works really well. So the, what I'm trying to say actually is that it's a win-win. Whether you do it with a unit or outside of a unit, you're going to get value. All right, so also in this series is this book called Struggle for the Continent. And I'd actually put this book with our Western Movement unit, which I actually did before our American Revolution unit, which... I know it does not make sense because it follows the American Revolution. 
but I actually had put this book in with that because it talked about the the wars between or the battles between the French and the Indians and then the Americans and the British or the British really and I thought that that was really important in understanding the Western movement but really this is actually better placed with an American Revolution time period unit study because this really sets the stage for what follows during the American Revolution. So I am also including it in this uh, review video to share with you. Uh, we, we like this one just like we like all the other ones. We also were challenged by this one just for the sheer amount of information that's in it. And so like the other ones, we would read as much as we could and then we would take a break from it. But I didn't have a lot of other books to complement this time period or this these events. So I didn't have a lot of picture books to go along with it. So we would just kind of break from it and do something else and then come back and continue reading it. One book that I don't think I shared when I put this unit together is Thomas Jefferson Builds a Library. And this picture book was phenomenal. It was awesome. I absolutely loved it. And reading this alongside with our American Revolution unit study and also as a preview to our Western movement and the Lewis and Clark expedition unit study was phenomenal. I love this book so much. It was so insightful into why Thomas Jefferson loved books so much and why he had a huge library. And and it, 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 I just I love the backstory, knowing this and then being able to piece it in together with the rest of history and that time period. So I highly, highly recommend this book. It's great for just to own outside of doing a history unit study, but uh, definitely something that we really, really enjoyed. Uh, I want to share with you one of the, I have more books, but I want to share with you one of the projects that we did. This is called Famous Figures for the American Revolution. And we have used these, um, these books or these activities before with our other history units and my children have loved them. I was totally surprised. We only had one and I, I don't remember which unit. I think it was for the Middle Ages and especially my eight-year-old daughter loved these so, so much and even my 13-year-old son got into it as well. And so I went ahead and I got them for all the other history periods that I could find these for. I was surprised that these were such a hit, to be honest. Now, you assemble these paper doll figures, and what's really fantastic about them is that they come with two paper dolls, one that's already colored in and one that you can color in. What it doesn't come with are the brads, and I happen to be a scrapbooker, so I had a lot of these on hand. So you just need some color pencils and a pair of scissors and you're good to go. And what I also really loved about this book is that the, the beginning of the book comes with all these little captions that are actually perforated. Well, actually the pages are perforated, not this part, but you can cut them out and have information about each of these different historical figures. And also on the back, there's just a little bit about each one. And of course, each one is labeled so that you know which one it goes with in case you're cutting multiple paper dolls at one time. But these little extra bits of information make this book such a valuable resource as a biography uh, addition to your unit study or your history units. And then of course it has the paper dolls, which my children actually really, really loved to play with. So I, I highly recommend this, this book uh, activity. Uh, I was totally surprised that it ended up being such a big hit for my kids and they, they want all of them. Okay, so you wouldn't want to be at the Boston Tea Party. I really like this series of books because they are super easy to read. They have really great, fun, whimsical illustrations. I usually find them to be really captivating. I've loved pretty much all of the ones that we've gotten. My only hesitation with these recently is the depth of information. On occasion, I want something that's a little bit deeper, and this book isn't going to provide that for you. And that's okay. Sometimes having a variety of resources is just what a unit study needs but if you're looking for something that's going to have more depth this is probably not going to be the resource for you overall i still really love them and anytime i find one that coordinates with one of our units definitely pick it up and add it into our units all right so we have a couple of books on paul revere i showed you a picture book on his biography earlier and this one is paul revere's ride this is a uh, this is from the poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and I really, really love this book. 
Sometimes if you're not used to poetry and verse, it can be a little bit difficult to get through, but it's so gorgeous. It, it captures the, I think the, uh, what would you call it? Like the anticipation of that situation. And, uh, it's very emotional, but at the same time, you're just wondering what's going to happen next. What's going to happen next? And the illustrations are absolutely fabulous. Just works of art. Really, really love this one. Again, this is a book that would work great for just any time of year, not just for a, a history unit. Uh, there are some picture books that you're like, oh, I'm just going to read that with our history unit because we need that. But there are some picture books that are just so wonderful. You can have them anytime and, and they're just really great reads. Uh, let me show you the this book called The Boston Tea Party. Uh, this is another one that we read with this unit and it just goes into more details about the Boston Tea Party. So a book like this, I, I love the illustrations by the way, a book like this is really great for us when we're reading through one of our other texts and we get to a, a section on the Boston P Tea Party, then it's an opportunity for us just to pause and like pull out one of our picture books and read it and then it kind of just breaks up the monotony of one lengthy book with something that just gives you just a little peek inside, a little bit more information, just a little different take on it. And so that's what I really love about adding these kinds of picture books into our unit study. I want to show you these historical replica coins. We also had these with our colonial unit study. And to be honest, I thought we were going to get more value out of these, but we didn't. And I'm so shocked about that. And that's just sometimes going to happen. There were the historical figure paper dolls that I thought, well, we probably aren't going to get through that. And then we end up doing the whole thing and loving it. And then these ones, I thought the kids would be way more intrigued by them and they just weren't. Now, I still really love these. And even knowing that my kids weren't intrigued with them, I would still include them in a unit study because it's such a, a unique asset for a unit study to have these replica coins. And so I definitely still would recommend this. I'm just surprised that my kids weren't into it as much as I thought they were going to be into it. We did a dig, discover, and display uh, excavation kit. Now, we've done these a lot in the past, but for some reason in the past year, we haven't done them that much. So pulling these out, again, has been a real joy for my kids. This one's called Archaeology USA, and this is what it looks like. This is a little different than some of the other dig, discover, and display kits in that it's a complete framed piece and then you excavate all of these things that are inside and it's all like just clear uh, plaster color and then it comes with the paint so that you can paint it up so that it looks like what's on the box. Next I want to show you the three activity books that we have for this unit. We've also used it for our Colonial America unit. You could actually use a lot of these projects in a Western Movement unit or even when you're doing your state history. So we have three books here and I want to show you this one first. It's called Colonial Kids. It's by Lori Carlson and we have a lot of her books and we've really enjoyed them because the projects are super simple. A lot of times you can just do it with stuff that you already have around the house. The only thing is that sometimes I'll upgrade some of these projects so that they last a little bit longer or I'm using higher quality materials but for the most part it's super easy and you're going to find a lot of these projects repeated in these two books. The next one I have is called Great Colonial America Projects and we've used this one in the past but we didn't use it this time around at all. This one I feel has projects that are simple all the way to way more intense and complicated. I think this would work well for an older student whereas colonial kids could work well for even as young as kindergarten or preschool all the way through elementary school. What's nice about this book as well is that it comes with a lot of content. So if you needed a book that had content as well as projects, this would be a great addition to this unit. Colonial Days. This is one book that we haven't used that much. And any of the projects that we've done in here, we've done them that because they've been repeated in some of these books. There are a few things in here in the past that we've done, but for the most part, this isn't my go-to activity book for this time period. What's nice about this book is that it, it is organized by the seasons, and so you have different activities that would complement that, se that season. So you've got spring here in chapter one, then you have things that would work really well for the spring. This is really nice, a dandelion, san uh, a dandelion salad. Uh, and then you have other activities that go through the different seasons. So though I haven't 
look through it but here's dipping candles and i would imagine that was in the winter time and sure enough it's in the winter which makes a lot of sense because that's the time of year that you would need your candles and so i kind of i like that feature of that book okay the last couple of things i want to show you here are the books that my son read as his base his content for these three unit studies that we did on colonial america the western movement and uh, American Revolution. So he went through these books. Uh, I do want to quickly show you History Songs. This is by Audio Memory Publishing, and we've had a lot of their products before, but we've been homeschooling for a really long time, and this hasn't been as popular with my younger children as it was with my older children. So we didn't listen to this one at all, but we had other audio that complemented uh, this, these series of history uh, units and one of them that we're still listening to is by Jim Weiss and that one ended up being a nice audio that complemented this unit that we were able to listen to but I have to say that overall the nonfiction audio hasn't been as successful in our home as it used to be and the children are really just enjoying fiction audio at this point so that's just something that was kind of a surprise because audio used to be a huge hit in our home Okay, so before I show you these uh, books and also the main lesson book, I just want to show you some of the things that we pulled out uh, from our homeschool supplies because I just thought it would go well with this unit. And it's just like this slingshot that we picked up uh, quite a while ago and you put little wooden balls in here and my kids will build things out of the Kapla blocks and then knock them down. And it just it felt like some of the toys that would have been around during the colonial period. Okay, so we have The History of Us, Volume 2 and 3, and I had intended for my son to read both of these books and to do narrations on them because this fit the time period that we were studying, but he was only able to get through one of the books, which is still really phenomenal considering that these units were all fairly short. He also did written narrations for each of the chapters that he did. This main lesson book has pages for his illustrations and then pages for the written content. These books have one blank page and then two pages for writing and then an onion skin and then a page for drawing. And this works out great for this age group where they're doing less drawing and the drawings don't have to be quite as large. And so this main lesson book worked really well. But my son is growing out of the illustrations. And so in the future, it might just be uh, composition books with just places for him to do the writing. So originally, he was doing a full paragraph for every chapter that he read. But because that was taking too much time and it was really important for me to have him read the book, he shortened the narrations down to just a couple of sentences just to summarize um, a highlight or just a general idea of what was going on in the chapter. These chapters are really short and I feel like they make it really easy for a student to go through the information without feeling too overwhelmed. You can see chapter 39 was just you know two and a half pages. It also is packed with illustrations and captions and things just to kind of break up the text. Now, this could be a positive or a negative thing, depending on how you look at these extra bits. <laughs> and sometimes I find them to be a little bit overwhelming for me personally. And to be honest, I don't even know if my son read all of these extra bits or he just read the content. But I do appreciate all the illustrations that go along with the text because I feel like that is a nice way to balance out the text heavy book. Now my son is 13 and my daughter is eight and this main lesson block was for both of them or the unit study was for both of them. But my son is the only one that read through these. This was not something that I read aloud to him and I didn't expect my daughter to do any written work. She did a lot of drawings and she did the projects and she might have written a little bit but I wasn't expecting her to. Uh, primarily the writing portion was for my 13 year old son. So he didn't get to volume three at all. And that's okay. I feel like these books are, are well suited for high, a high school level history class. And so we definitely intend to use these again when my son is in high school. And so the fact that he didn't get through all of them this time around was totally fine by me. Okay. I think that wraps it up. 
If you'd like to see the projects and activities that we did for this unit study, as well as our other history units, you can tap on the screen right now. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more pictures and all the tutorials, as well as links to the books that we've used. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.